was a cattleman, and he pastured his animals eastward to the edge of the desert and to the Euphrates River, for there were many cattle in the land of Gilead. During the reign of King Saul, the men of Reuben defeated the Hagrites in war and moved into their tents on the eastern edge of Gilead. Across from them, in the land of Bashan, lived the descendants of Gad, who were spread as far as Salica. Joel was the greatest, and was followed by Shapham, and also Janae and Shaphat. Their relatives, the heads of the seven clans, were Michael, Meshulam, Sheba, Joray, Jacob, Ziah, and Eber. The descendants of Buzz, in the order of their generations, were Jado, Cheshishai, Michael, Gilead, Jerora, Hurai, Abihail. Ahai, the son of Abdiel, the grandson of Gunai, was the leader of the clan. The clan lived in and around Gilead, in the land of Bashan, and throughout the entire pasture country of Sharon. All were included in the official genealogy at the time of King Jotham of Judah and King Jeroboam of Israel. There were 44,760 armed, trained, and brave troops in the army of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They declared war on the Hagrites, the Jeterites, the Naphishites, and the Notabites. They cried out to God to help them, and he did, for they trusted in him. So the Hagrites and all their allies were defeated. The booty included 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 captives. A great number of the enemy also died in the battle, for God was fighting against them. So the Reubenites lived in the territory of the Hagrites until the time of the exile. The half-tribe of Manasseh spread through the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, Sinar, and Mount Hermon. They, too, were very numerous. The chiefs of their clans were the following. Ephraim, Aishai, Eliel, Azrael, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, Jadiel. Each of these men had a great reputation as a warrior and leader, but they were not true to the God of their fathers. Instead, they worshipped the idols of the people whom God had destroyed. So God caused King Pul of Assyria, also known as Tilgath Pilneser III, to invade the land and deport the men of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They took them to Hala, Habor, Hera, and the Gozan River, where they remain to this day. Chapter 6 These are the names of the sons of Levi. Gershom, Kohath, Barerai. Kohath's sons were Amram, Izhar, Hebron, Uziel, Amran's descendants included Aaron, Moses, Miriam. Aaron's sons were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, Ithamar. The oldest sons of the successive generations of Aaron were as follows. Eleazar, the father of Phinehas, the father of Abishua, the father of Bukai, the father of Uzai, the father of Zerahiah, the father of Merayoth, the father of Amariah, the father of Ahitub, the father of Zadok, the father of Ahimadez, the father of Azariah, the father of Johanan, the father of Azariah, the high priest in Solomon's temple at Jerusalem, the father of Amariah, the father of Ahitub, the father of Zadok, the father of Shalom, the father of Hilkiah, the father of Azariah, the father of Saraiah, the father of Jehozadak, who went into exile when the Lord sent the people of Judah and Jerusalem into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. As previously stated, the sons of Levi were Gershom, Kohath, Barerai. The sons of Gershom were Lebni, Shimei. The sons of Kohath were Amram, Izhar, Hebron, Aziel. The sons of Merari were Malai, Mushai. The subclans of the Levites were in the Gershom clan, Libni, Jahath, 
Zema, Joa, Ido, Zira, Jiathere. In the Kohate clan, Aminadab, Korah, Aser, Elkanah, Ebiasaph, Aser, Tehath, Uriel, Aziah, Sheo. The subclan of Elkanah was further divided into the families of his sons, Amasiah, Ahimuth, Elkanah, Sophe, Nahath, Eliab, Jeroham, Elkanah. The families of the subclan of Samuel were headed by Samuel's sons, Joel, the oldest, Abijah, the second. The subclans of the clan of Merari were headed by his sons, Malai, Libni, Shimei, Uzzah, Shimei, Haggaiah, Asaiah. King David appointed song leaders and choirs to praise God in the temple after he had placed the ark in it. Then, when Solomon built the temple at Jerusalem, the choirs carried on their work there. These are the names and ancestries of choir leaders. Heman, the cantor, was from the clan of Kohath. His genealogy was traced back through Joel, Samuel, Elkanah the third, Jeroham, Eliel, Toa, Zuth, Elkanah the second, Mahath, Amasai, Elkanah the first, Joel, Azariah, Zephaniah, Tehath, Aser, Ebiasaph, Korah, Izhar, Kohath. Levi, Israel. Heman's assistant was his colleague, Asaph, whose genealogy was traced back through Berechiah, Shimei, Michael, Baaseah, Melchijah, Ethni, Zerah, Adaiah, Ethan, Zema, Shimei, Jahath, Gershom, Levi. Heman's second assistant was Ethan, a representative from the clan of Merari, who stood on his left. Merari's ancestry was traced back through Kishai, Abdi, Maluk, Hashabiah, Amaziah, Hilkiah, Amzai, Benai, Shemer, Melai, Mushai, Merari, Levi. Their relatives, all the other Levites, were appointed to various other tasks in the tabernacle. But only Aaron and his descendants were the priests. Their duties included sacrificing burnt offerings and incense, handling all the tasks relating to their inner sanctuary, the Holy of Holies, and the tasks relating to the annual Day of Atonement for Israel. They saw to it that all the details commanded by Moses, the servant of God, were strictly followed. The descendants of Aaron were Eleazar, Phinehas, Abishua, Bukai, Uzai, Zerahiah, Moreah, Amariah, Ahitub, Zadok, Ahimaaz. This is a record of the cities and land assigned by Lot to the descendants of Aaron, all of whom were members of the Kohath clan. Hebron and its surrounding pasture lands in Judah although the fields and suburbs were given to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and the following cities of refuge with their surrounding pasture lands, Libna, Jetir, Eshtemoa, Hylan, Deber, Ashan, Beth Shemes, 13 other cities with surrounding pastures, including Geba, Alameth, and Anathoth, were given to the priest by the tribe of Benjamin. Lots were then drawn to assign land to the remaining descendants of Kohath, and they received ten cities in the territory of the half-tribe of Manasseh. The subclans of the Gershom clan received by Lot thirteen cities in the Bashan area from the tribes of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and Manasseh. The subclans of Merari received by Lot twelve cities from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. Cities and pasture lands were also assigned by lot to the Levites and then renamed from the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. 
The tribe of Ephraim gave these cities a refuge with the surrounding pasture lands to the subclans of Kohath. Shechem in Mount Ephraim, Gezer, Jokmiam, Beth Horon, Aijalon, Gathrimon. The following cities of refuge and their pasture lands were given to the subclans of the Kohathites by the half tribe of Manasseh. Aner, Bileam, cities of refuge and pasture land given to the clan of Gershom by the half tribe of Manasseh were Golan in Bashan, Ashtaroth. The tribe of Issachar gave them Kadesh, Dabarath, Ramoth, and Anam, and the surrounding pasture land of each. The tribe of Asher gave them Abdon, Meshal, Hukok, and Rehob with their pasture land. The tribe of Naphtali gave them Kedesh in Galilee, Hammon, and Kiriathaim with pasture land. The tribe of Zebulun gave Rebino and Tabor to the Merari clans as cities of refuge. And across the Jordan River, opposite Jericho, the tribe of Reuben gave them Bezer, a desert town, Jaza, Kedemoth, and Mephaath, along with their pasture lands. The tribe of Gad gave them Ramoth and Gilead, Mayanaim, Heshbon, and Jazer, each with their surrounding pasture lands. Chapter 7 The sons of Issachar, Tola, Hua, Jashub, Shimron. The sons of Tola, each of whom was the head of a subclan, Uzai, Raphaiah, Jeriel, Jamei, Ibsham. Shemuel. At the time of King David, the total number of men of war from these families totaled 22,600. Uzai's son was Ezrahiah, among whose five sons were Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishahiah, all chiefs of subclans. Their descendants at the time of King David numbered 36,000 troops. For all five of them had several wives and many sons. The total number of men available for military service from all the clans of the tribe of Issachar numbered 87,000 stout-hearted warriors, all included in the official genealogy. The sons of Benjamin were Bela, Beaker, Jediah, the sons of Bela, Esbon, Uzai, Uziel, Jeremoth, Irai. These five mighty warriors were the chiefs of subclans and were the leaders of 22,034 troops, all of whom were recorded in the official genealogies. The sons of Beaker were Zemira, Joash, Eliezer, Elioenai, Amri, Jeremoth, Abijah, Anathoth, Alameth. At the time of David, there were 22,200 mighty warriors among their descendants, and they were led by their clan chiefs. The son of Jediel was Bilhan. The sons of Bilhan were Jeosh, Benjamin, Ehud, Jenea, Zethan, Tarshish, Ahishar. They were the chiefs of the subclans of Jediel, and their descendants included 17,200 warriors at the time of King David. The sons of Ur were Shepham and Huppam. Hushem was one of the sons of Ahur. The sons of Naphtali, descendants of Jacob's wife, Bilhah, were Jaziel, Gunai, Jezer, Shalom. The sons of Manasseh, born to his Armenian concubine, were Asriel and Makir, who became the father of Gilead. It was Makir who found wives for Huppam and Suppam. Makir's sister was Maacah. Another descendant was Philopiad, who had only daughters. Makir's wife, also named Maacah, bore him a son whom she named Heresh. His brother's name was Sheresh, and he had sons named Ulam and Rakim. Ulam's son was Bidan. So these were the sons of Gilead, the grandsons of Makir, and the great-grandsons of Manasseh. Amoleketh, Maker's sister bore Ishbad, Abiezer, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ahian, Shechem, Lichai, and Anium.
the sons of Ephraim, Shuthalah, Bered, Tehath, Eladah, Tehath, Zabad, Shuthalah, Ezer, Eliad. Eliad and Ezer attempted to rustle cattle at Gath, but they were killed by the local farmers. Their father, Ephraim, mourned for them a long time, and his brothers tried to comfort him. Afterwards, his wife conceived and bore a son, whom he called Uriah, meaning a tragedy, because of what had happened. Ephraim's daughter's name was Shira. She built Lower and Upper Bethhoron and Uzan Shira. This is Ephraim's line of descent. Repha, the father of Reshef, the father of Tila, the father of Tehan, the father of Ladan, the father of Emihad, the father of Elashima, the father of Nun, the father of Joshua. They lived in an area bounded on one side by Bethel and its surrounding towns, on the east by Naaran, on the west by Gezer and its villages, and finally by Shechem and its surrounding villages as far as Aya and its town. The tribe of Manasseh, descendants of Joseph, the son of Israel, control the following cities and their surrounding areas. Beth Sheen, Teanach, Megiddo, and Dor. The children of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, Bariah, Sarah, their sister. The sons of Bariah were Heber, Balkiel, the father of Berziah. Heber's children were Japhlet, Shomer, Hotham, Shua, their sister. Japhlet's sons were Pesach, Bimhal, Ashbeth. His brother Shomer's sons were Roga, Jehaba, Aram. The sons of his brother Hotham were Zopha, Imna, Shelesh, Amol. The sons of Zopha were Sua, Harnifer. Shuol, Mirai, Imra, Bezer, Hod, Shama, Shilsha, Ithran, the Ira. The sons of Ithran were Jephunneh, Pishpa, Ara. The sons of Ulla were Ara, Haniel, Reziah. These descendants of Asher were heads of subclans and were all skilled warriors and chiefs. Their descendants in the official genealogy numbered 36,000 men of war. Chapter 8 The sons of Benjamin, according to age, were Bela, the first, Ashbel, the second, Ahara, the third, Noha, the fourth, Repha, the fifth. The sons of Bela were Adar, Gira, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gira, Shephuphan, Huram. The sons of Ehud, chiefs of the subclans living at Geba, were captured in war and exiled to Manahath. They were Naaman, Ahijah, Gira, also called Haglam, the father of Uzzah, and Ahihud. Shehoram divorced his wives, Hushim and Beirah, but he had children in the land of Moab by Hodesh, his new wife, Jobad, Zibia, Misha, Malcam, Jehoz, Zekiah, Mirmah. These sons all became chiefs of subclans. His wife, Husham, had borne him Abitub and Elpael. The sons of Elpael were Eber, Misham, Shemad, who built Ono and Lod and their surrounding villages. His other sons were Beriah and Shema, chiefs of subclans living in Ejelon. They chased out the inhabitants of Gath. Elpael's sons also included Ahio, Shashak, Jeremoth. The sons of Beriah were Zebediah, Arad, Eder, Michael, Ishpa, Joha. The sons of El Peo also included Zebediah, Meshulam, Hezkai, Heber, Ishmere, Isliah, Jobab. The sons of Shimei were Jacob, Zikri, 
Zabdi, Elienai, Zilthe, Eliel, Adaiah, Berea, Shimrath. The sons of Sheshak were Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, and Tothijah, Ephdiah, Penuel. The sons of Jeroham were Shamsherai, Shehariah, Athaliah, Jerishiah, Elijah, Zikri. These were the chiefs of the subclans living at Jerusalem. Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived at Gibeon, and his wife's name was Maacah. His oldest son was named Abdon, followed by Zur, Kish, Baal, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zikr, Mikloth, who was the father of Shimea. All of these families lived together near Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish, and Kish was the father of Saul. Saul's sons included Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, Ishbael. The son of Jonathan was Mephibosheth. The son of Mephibosheth was Micah. The sons of Micah, Python, Melech, Teria, Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jehoiada. Jehoiada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, Zimri. Zimri's son was Moza. Moza was the father of Benia, whose sons were Rapha, Eliasa, Azel. Azel had six sons, Azrikim, Bakaru, Ishmael, Shiariah, Obadiah, Hanan. Azel's brother, Eshek, had three sons, Ulam, the first, Jehush, the second, Alephalet, the third. Ulam's sons were prominent warriors who were expert marksmen with their bows. These men had 150 sons and grandsons, and they were all from the tribe of Benjamin. Chapter 9 The family tree of every person in Israel was carefully recorded in the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Judah was exiled to Babylon because people worshipped idols. The first to return and live again in their former cities were families from the tribes of Israel, and also the priests, the Levites, and the temple assistants. Then some families from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh arrived in Jerusalem. One family was that of Uthai, the son of Amihud, son of Amri, son of Imri, son of Bani, of the clan of Perez, son of Judah. The Shilonites were another family to return, including Asaiah, Shilon's oldest son, and his sons. There were also the sons of Zerah, including Jehuel and his relatives, 690 in all. Among the members of the tribe of Benjamin who returned were these, Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Horabiah, the son of Hasanua, Ebnia, the son of Jeroham, Elah, the son of Uzai, the son of Mikri, Meshulam, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Abnijah. These men were all chiefs of subclans. A total of 956 Benjaminites returned. The priests who returned were Jedeah, Jehoiarib, Jachin, Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Moreah, son of Ahitub. He was the chief custodian of the temple. Another of the returning priests was Adaiah, son of Jeroham, son of Pashur, son of Melchijah. Another priest was Maaseh, son of Adiel, son of Jasera, son of Meshulam, son of Meshelameth, son of Emmer. In all, 1,760 priests returned. Among the Levites who returned was Shemaiah, son of Hashab, son of Azrakam, son of Hashabiah, who was a descendant of Merari. Other Levites who returned included Bakbakar, Heresh, Galol, Mataniah, the son of Micah, who was the son of Zikri, who was the son of Asaph, Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, son of Galol, son of Jejuthun. 
Berechiah, the son of Asa, son of Elkanah, who lived in the area of Netophathites. The gatekeepers were Shalom, the chief gatekeeper, Hakob, Talman, and Ahiman, all Levites. They are still responsible for the eastern royal gate. Shalom's ancestry went back through Cori and Abiasaph to Korah. He and his close relatives, the Korahites, were in charge of the sacrifices and the protection of the sanctuary, just as their ancestors had supervised and guarded the tabernacle. Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, was the first director of this division in ancient times, and the Lord was with him. At that time, Zechariah, the son of Meshelemiah, had been responsible for the protection of the entrance to the tabernacle. There were 212 doorkeepers in those days. They were chosen from their villages on the basis of their genealogies, and they were appointed by David and Samuel because of their reliability. They and their descendants were in charge of the Lord's tabernacle. They were assigned to each of the four sides, east, west, north, and south, and their relatives in the villages were assigned to them from time to time for seven days at a time. The four head gatekeepers, all Levites, were in an office of great trust, for they were responsible for the rooms and treasuries in the tabernacle of God. Because of their important positions, they lived near the tabernacle, and they opened the gates each morning. Some of them were assigned to care for the various vessels used in the sacrifices and worship. They checked them in and out to avoid loss. Others were responsible for the furniture, the items in the sanctuary, and the supplies such as fine flour, wine, incense, and spices. Other priests prepared the spices and incense. And Mattathiah, a Levite, and the oldest son of Shalom, the Korahite, was entrusted with making the flat cakes for grain offerings. Some members of the Kohath clan were in charge of the preparation of the special bread each Sabbath. The cantors were all prominent Levites. They lived in Jerusalem at the temple and were on duty at all hours. They were free from other responsibilities and were selected by their genealogies. Jeiel, whose wife was Maacha, lived in Gibeon. He had many sons, including Gibeon, Abdon, the oldest, Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gidor, Ahio, Zechariah, Mikloth. Mikloth lived with his son Shimeam in Jerusalem near his relatives. Nair was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was the father of Micah. Micah was the father of Python, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jera. Jera was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia, Bethiah, Eliasa, and Azel. Azel had six sons, Azrakim, Bakaru, Ishmael, Sheariah, Obadiah, Hanan. Chapter 10 The Philistines attacked and defeated the Israeli troops who turned and fled and were slaughtered on the slopes of Mount Gilboa. They caught up with Saul and his three sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Mount Yeshua, and killed them all. Saul had been hard-pressed with heavy fighting all around him when the Philistine archers shot and wounded him. He cried out to his bodyguards, Quick! Kill me with your sword before these uncircumcised heathen capture and torture me. But the man was afraid to do it, so Saul took his own sword and fell against its point, and it pierced his body. Then his bodyguard, seeing that Saul was dead, killed himself in the same way. So Saul and his three sons died together. The entire family was wiped out in one day. When the Israelis in the valley below the mountain heard that their troops had been routed and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their cities and fled, and the Philistines came and lived in them. When the Philistines went back the next day to strip the bodies of the men killed in action and to gather the booty from the battlefield, they found the bodies of Saul and his sons. So they stripped off Saul's armor 
and cut off his head. Then they displayed them throughout the nation and celebrated the wonderful news before their idols. They fastened his armor to the walls of the temple of the god and nailed his head to the wall of Dagon's temple. But when the people of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, their heroic warriors went out to the battlefield and brought back his body and the bodies of his three sons. Then they buried them beneath the oak tree at Jabesh and mourned and fasted for seven days. Saul died for his disobedience to the Lord and because he had consulted a medium and did not ask the Lord for guidance. So the Lord killed him and gave the kingdom to David, the son of Jesse. Chapter 11 Then the leaders of Israel went to David at Hebron and told him, We are your relatives. And even when Saul was king, you were the one who led our armies to battle and brought them safely back again. And the Lord your God has told you, you shall be the shepherd of my people Israel. You shall be their king. So David made a contract with them before the Lord, and they anointed him as king of Israel, just as the Lord had told Samuel. Then David and the leaders went to Jerusalem, or Jebus, as it used to be called, where the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land, lived. But the people of Jebus refused to let them enter the city. So David captured the fortress of Zion, later called the city of David, and said to his men, The first man to kill a Jebusite shall be made commander-in-chief. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was the first. So he became the general of David's army. David lived in the fortress, and that is why that area of Jerusalem is called the City of David. He extended the city out around the fortress, while Joab rebuilt the rest of Jerusalem. And David became more and more famous and powerful, for the Lord of the heavens was with him. These are the names of some of the bravest of David's warriors, who also encouraged the leaders of Israel to make David their king, as the Lord had said would happen. Jashobim, the son of a man from Hakmon, was the leader of the top three, the three greatest heroes among David's men. He once killed 300 men with his spear. The second of the top three was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, a member of the subclan of Aho. He was with David in the battle against the Philistines at Pass Damon. The Israeli army was in a barley field and had begun to run away, but he held his ground in the middle of the field and recovered it and slaughtered the Philistines. And the Lord saved them with a great victory. Another time, three of the thirty went to David while he was hiding in the cave at Adullam. The Philistines were camped in the valley of Rephim. And David was in the stronghold at the time. An outpost of the Philistines had occupied Bethlehem. David wanted a drink from the Bethlehem well beside the gate. And when he mentioned this to his men, these three broke through to the Philistine camp, drew some water from the well, and brought it back to David but he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord and said, God forbid that I should drink it. It is the very blood of these men who risked their lives to get it. Abishai, Joab's brother, was commander of the 30. He had gained his place among the 30 by killing 300 men at one time with his spear. He was the chief and the most famous of the 30, but he was not as great as the three. Benaiah, whose father was a mighty warrior from Kabzeel, killed the two famous giants from Moab. He also killed a lion in a slippery pit when there was snow on the ground. Once he killed an Egyptian who was seven and one-half feet tall, whose spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. But Benaiah went up to him with only a club in his hand and pulled the spear away from him and used it to kill him. He was nearly as great as the three, and he was very famous among the thirty. David made him captain of his bodyguard. Other famous warriors among David's men were Ashael, Joab's brother, Elhanan, the son of Dodo, from Bethlehem, Shema, from Herod, Helaz, from Pilon, Era, son of Ekesh, from Tekoa, Abiezer, from Anathoth, Sibake from Hushath, Ile from Aho, Meharai from Natopha, Helad, son of Baena, from Natopha, 
Esai, son of Ribei, a Benjaminite from Gibeah, Benaiah from Pirathon, Hure from near the brooks of Geash, Abio from Arbath, Asmaveth from Beharim, Eliaba from Shealvan, the sons of Hashem from Gizon, Jonathan, son of Shagi from Harar, Ahiam, son of Saker from Harar, Eliphal, son of Ur, Hefer from Akirath, Ahijah from Pelon, Hezro from Carmel, Nere, son of Ezbei, Joel, brother of Nathan, Mivhar, son of Hagri, Zelek from Ammon, Naharai from the Eroth, he was General Joab's armor bearer, Ira from Ithra, Gerib from Ithra, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad son of Alei, Adina son of Shiza from the tribe of Reuben, he was among the thirty-one leaders of the tribe of Reuben, Hanan son of Maaka, Josaphat from Mithna, Uzziah from Astaroth, Shema and Jeiel, sons of Hotham, from Aror, Jediel, son of Shimri, Joha, his brother, from Tiza, Eliel, from Maavai, Jerobai, and Josabiah, sons of Elam, Isma, from Moab, Eliel, Obed, Jeasiel, from Mezoba. Chapter 12 These are the names of the famous warriors who joined David at Ziklag while he was hiding from King Saul. All of them were expert archers and slingers, and they could use their left hands as readily as their right. Like King Saul, they were all of the tribe of Benjamin. Their chief was Ahiezer, son of Shemaiah, from Gibeah. The others were his brother Joash, Jeziel, and Peleth sons of Asmaveth, Baraka, Jehu, from Anathoth, Ismaiah, from Gibeon, a brave warrior, rated as high or higher than the thirty, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, Jozebad, from Gedera, Eluzii, Jeremoth, Eliah, Shemariah, Shephatiah, from Haroth, Elkanah, Ishiah, Azarel, Joezer, Jeshobiam, all Korahites, Joelah, and Zebediah, sons of Jeron, from Gedor. Great and brave warriors from the tribe of Gad also went to David in the wilderness. They were experts with both shield and spear, and were lion-faced men, swift as deer upon the mountains. Ezer was the chief. Obadiah was second in command. Eliab was third in command. Mishmana was fourth in command. Jeremiah was fifth in command. Atei was sixth in command. Eliel was seventh in command. Johanan was eighth in command. Elzebad was ninth in command. Jeremiah was tenth in command. Macbane was eleventh in command. These men were army officers, the weakest was worth a hundred normal troops, and the greatest was worth a thousand. They crossed the Jordan River during its seasonal flooding and conquered the lowlands on both the east and west banks. Others came to David from Benjamin and Judah. David went out to meet them and said, If you have come to help me, we are friends. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies when I am innocent, then may the God of our fathers see and judge you. Then the Holy Spirit came upon them, and Amasai, the leader of the thirty, replied, We are yours, David. We are on your side, son of Jesse. Peace, peace be unto you, and peace to all who aid you, for your God is with you. So David let them join him, and he made them captains of his army. Some men from Manasseh deserted the Israeli army and joined David just as he was going into battle with the Philistines against King Saul. But, as it turned out, the Philistine generals refused to let David and his men go with them. 
After much discussion, they sent them back, for they were afraid that David and his men would imperil them by deserting to King Saul. Here is a list of the men from Manasseh who deserted to David as he was en route to Ziklag. Adna, Jozebad, Jediel, Michael, Jozebad, Elihu, Zilathai. Each was a high-ranking officer of Manasseh's troops. They were brave and able warriors, and they assisted David when he fought against the Anlak raiders at Ziklag. More men joined David almost every day until he had a tremendous army, the army of God. Here is the registry of recruits who joined David at Hebron. They were all anxious to see David become king instead of Saul, just as the Lord had said would happen. From Judah, 6,800 troops armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Simeon, 7,100 outstanding warriors. From the Levites, 4,600. From the priests, descendants of Aaron, there were 3,700 troops under the command of Zadok, a young man of unusual courage, and Jehoiada. He and 22 members of his family were officers of the fighting priests. From the tribe of Benjamin, the same tribe Saul was from, there were 3,000. Most of that tribe retained its allegiance to Saul. From the tribe of Ephraim, 20,800 mighty warriors, each famous in his respective clans. From the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 were sent for the express purpose of helping David become king. From the tribe of Ishakar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives, all men who understood the temper of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. From the tribe of Zebulun, there were 50,000 trained warriors. They were fully armed and totally loyal to David. From Naphtali, there were 1,000 officers and 37,000 troops equipped with shields and spears. From the tribe of Dan, there were 28,600 troops, all of them prepared for war. From the tribe of Asher, there were 40,000 trained and ready troops. From the other side of the Jordan River, where the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh lived, there were 120,000 troops equipped with every kind of weapon. All these men came in battle array to Hebron with the single purpose of making David the king of Israel. In fact, all of Israel was ready for this change. They feasted and drank with David for three days, for preparations had been made for their arrival. People from nearby and from as far away as Issachar, Jebulun, and Naphtali brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen, vast supplies of flour, fig cakes, raisins, wine, oil, cattle, and sheep were brought to the celebration, for joy had spread throughout the land. Chapter 13 After David had consulted with all of his army officers, he addressed the assembled men of Israel as follows. Since you think that I should be your king, and since the Lord our God has given his approval, let us send messengers to our brothers throughout the land of Israel, including the priests and Levites, inviting them to come and join us. And let us bring back the ark of our God, for we have been neglecting it ever since Saul became king. There was unanimous consent, for everyone agreed with him. So David summoned the people of Israel from all across the nation so that they could be present when the ark of God was brought from Kirath Jearim. Then David and all Israel went to Baalah, Kirath Jearim, in Judah, to bring back the ark of the Lord God enthroned above the angels. It was taken from the house of Abinadab on a new cart. Uzzah and Ahio drove the oxen. Then David and all the people danced before the Lord with great enthusiasm, accompanied by singing and by zithers, harps, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. But as they arrived at the threshing floor of Chidon, the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark. Then the anger of the Lord blazed out against Uzzah and killed him because he had touched the ark. And so he died there before God. David was angry at the Lord for what he had done to Uzzah, and he named the place the Outbreak Against Uzzah, and it is still called that today. Now David was afraid of God and asked, how shall I ever get the ark of God home? 
Finally, he decided to take it to the home of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, instead of bringing it to the city of David. The ark remained there with the family of Obed-Edom for three months, and the Lord blessed him and his family. Chapter 14 King Hiram of Tyre sent masons and carpenters to help build David's palace, and he supplied him with much cedar lumber. David now realized why the Lord had made him king and why he had made his kingdom so great. It was for a special reason, to give joy to God's people. After David moved to Jerusalem, he married additional wives and became the father of many sons and daughters. These are the names of the sons born to him in Jerusalem. Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elpelet, Noga, Nepheg, Jephiah, Elishama, Beeliada, Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David was Israel's new king, they mobilized their forces to capture him. But David learned that they were on their way, so he called together his army. The Philistines were raiding the valley of Rephaim, and David asked the Lord, If I go out and fight them, will you give me the victory? And the Lord replied, Yes, I will. So he attacked them at Baal Perazim and wiped them out. He exulted, God has used me to sweep away my enemies like water bursting through a dam.